Observation 1 is the resolution of Alaska. States upon is the resolution the United States should reinstate an active military draft. The peace upon is that we acknowledge the historical problems with the ethics and actions of the government. This is our problematization of that. This is our new ethic that we represent through the plan text. That's the plan. The United States federal government through an act of Congress signed by the President will reinstate an active military draft for children and extended family members of the United States political representative with a mandatory four-year enlistment. There's your copy. Observation 3 is the solvency. The first argument is that the 1W exception, exception is still going to be in place. This means the countries whose objectors are going to be able to go to civilian service to the, uh, civilian service corps like the Peace Corps and AmeriCorps. Advantage one, suffering. The basic point is the unique is the first argument is that the average population is not aware of militarization right now. The little layers you can look to the video games that's incentivized and glorified violence in the status quo where kids are running around playing as the United States military shooting at pretend enemy combatants means that people are just seeing this as literally a game that they get to play while they're at home. The little b is that the uh, according to the all volunteer force this uh, this leads to the disposability of veteran populations that we just abandon them once they get home. So veterans come back from combat and then when they have serious psychological problems as a result of the things that they saw and things that they did while they were overseas, we just abandoned them to die in the streets. The little C is that we only encourage those who can't afford to uh, go to college to enter the United States military. You can look to the treatment of African American individuals specifically with respect to the way they were treated in Vietnam that we've just built them up and uh, the quote that was used in the United States military was that they just served as sandbags. We are literally just sending these populations out there to die. The little thing is you can look to Senator James and Elfie who says that this just makes people better citizens when they go to the military it means that the United States is is just ignoring the problems that come from military service right now. The basic point is the link. The first argument is that the plan text happens that we send political representatives, children to the war zones. The second argument is that this forces individuals to confront suffering personally, that we need to personalize the suffering. The, you can look specifically to Vietnam, which was one of the first uprisings against U.S. military action because individuals were forced to confront the suffering on an individual basis, that when you are seeing the actual violence that is happening overseas and the problems that it's causing for the veterans, you are never going to be able to, be, to support the United States action. The See support of the impacts. The first argument is militarization. The little a is that this leads to military adventurism. That we are able to go. That militarization leads to military adventurism. Because we are able to go and engage uh, for uh, against other nations uh, for the purpose of freedom. And because we believe it's for the better good that when we go out to attempt to oppress other nations or enforce a new dictatorship in another country because we don't like the one that's there right now, the United States is able to justify it right now because we don't see the problems with militarization. We haven't personalized the suffering. It means that we aren't responding to it appropriately. The Little B is that this is the root cause of securitization, that because of our ability to ignore the problems that come out of military conflict, we have the ability to securitize. We are only able to accept this at the point at which we don't personalize the suffering and understand the problems that are happening in the world. The little C argument is that this is the root cause of all conflicts, that you can... Uh, you Oh, that we uh, we we continue to seek resources and seek a global uh, become the global share of the. Uh, this is just the uh, means of us uh, using our. Uh, we say that we have the bigger guns means that we have the right to take these resources. That militarization causes conflict with other nations because the point at which we see our ability through our might that we equivocate that to right and that this is the uh, rationalization that the United States uses to justify the violence that we are enacting in other nations. I'll take your question. Uh, so, how does making some senators feel bad because their kids are getting killed solve for like the military-industrial complex you're indicting your impacts? Because who's going to vote for it if their if their son just died in the war? Uh, additionally, this challenges the fundamental underpinnings of capitalism. Because corporations uh, utilize military ventureism to get resources. The territories. Group. The little thing is that this challenges the fundamental underpinnings of capitalism because this challenges the military, uh, the use of the military as a means of securing resources. That when we problematize the methods of capitalism, we are able to problematize capitalism itself. Means that we're going to be able to resolve this instance of the use of capital as a means of exploiting other nations. Are you happy? Yeah. Cool. Advantage two: minorities in the military. Minorities in the military. The basic point is the uniqueness. The first argument is that we see a higher pro a probability of war and people of color being in the military, that there is a de facto draft for these individuals because they don't see that they have options outside of the uh, out outside of this, that they aren't going to be able to provide for themselves as a result of routine policy failure to so to provide support for these individuals, that the structural violence that is enacted against them forces them into the military as a result of their uh, lack of options. The second argument is that if you look to the military, that 21.5% of the military is African American, while only 12.8% 
75% of the general population is African American means that these individuals are, are going to the military at a higher rate because this is seen as their way out of the poverty that they're being forced into in the status quo. The third argument is that you can look to the Democrat from New York, Senator Frankel, who says that we send, uh, that uh, fairness dictates that the sons and daughters of the white middle and upper class should share the burden and that these, there is not a question of presence that would never, that, uh, sorry. If there's no question of their presence, we would never have invaded Iraq in the first place. That when we send the children of the people who make the decision about whether or not we go into conflict, these people are never going to send us into conflict because this personalizes the suffering for them. That when they see the results of military action on their own family, they will necessarily recoil against it. The piece of point of the link, the first argument that the plant tax happens, that we have said that we uh, provide a draft for all representative children. The second argument is that this is a radical reconception of the political, that we force a decision to come from face-to-face uh, -face with the other means that the individuals in power are going to have to embrace the other as a result of their proximity to it. The third argument is that the plan ruptures the uh, the. Uh the plan ruptures is a rupture point that within the uh, racial and class system this ruptures the dichotomy that is inherent in the fighting forces right now. That at the point at which these individuals are forced to confront this, they are necessarily going to be able to recognize these issues as a result of closer proximity and as a result of recognizing the problems at hand. The season point of the impacts. The first argument is the structural violence that is happening against minority populations in the United States. The little a is that we just send the lesser privileged individuals out to fight our wars for us. The little b is that this leads to their death. That when we send other people out to be shot by other nations, they, we are just exploiting them as a tool of militarization and a tool of capitalism so that they are just disposable populations. The little c is that when we construct them as disposable populations in this context, it justifies constructing them as disposable populations in other contexts. This is why policy failure is so routine with respect to being able to resolve minority issues that we just see these populations as unimportant, that this is the first step in critically reimagining this. The second argument is otherization. The little a argument is that we are constructing the other in foreign, uh, foreign countries right now, that we are going to be able to resolve this by embracing the other, that when you are closer to the other, you have the ability to have higher recognizance of their problems, and as a result, are going to enact less violence against them because of your understanding of them. You begin to break down their dailiness and appreciate it means that you are going to be able to resolve for this violence overseas as well. Thank you for the table. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be... Two off, uh, and then case in order. Where are you just several sheets? Yeah. Yeah, you can read that in case. Okay. okay. It's one of these several sheets. What? One will be a criticism. One is a criticism. I don't know why you just don't ask that question. Yeah. I mean, some people. I don't think about this question as you can see. You need the right pieces of number of paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. So everyone, good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or 
differences? When there is any other that must always be securitized against and exterminated that leads to a permanent war of the We are always creating a new other that we must check against. The next of the environment that justifies infinite violations of the environment under the name of security preservation of the state means that this makes environmental devastation and epileptic and there's nobody in life in a world of securitization because the state is the guarantor of your life and unless you pledge yourself to the state and do exactly what they want and there is going to be you, they can deem you pol like politically disposable means there's no value. Like, well, I was going to say this turns case because it makes your impacts inevitable. Alternative. Vote opt to reject the affirmative and endorse the politics of insecurity. Vote opt to reject the affirmative and endorse the politics of insecurity. Solvency. It's, it's conditional. Conditional. Solvency. First, this is a removal. It's a similar symbolism. It is a reversal of the PMC and security is the antonym of security, which is a hospital gesture to the other, which solves back for all of their hospitality of the uh, and the hospital gesture advantages. If uh, with next is that this is a um a it is a um, symbolic reversal, which allows us to rewrite politics and we can reframe it in a world of insecurity, which we're going to say that states are always in a state of becoming, which means that we are allowed to reframe politics this way. We're going to say the office of interrogation and the PMC is a trap in security logic, which means that the only the interrogation is able to solve. And they say that we're going to say that this is a uh, which is a. Uh, uh, we are, uh, this is a, uh, this allows for a transfer of relations which allows us to reshape our cultural signifiers which solves for the affirmative that next to the role of the ballot is to endorse the team with the best ethical orientation in the round because ethics are the only thing that leaves us room which means it's the only coherent calculus. Fiat is obviously fake. means that you should evaluate ethics. Good. Mm -hmm. Politics. First, the unique is that Congress will, uh, will pass the authorization use of military force against the ISIL and the status quo. One of the king that came under suspicion for the AUM that has topped the docket. He said that uh, the Senator of Foreign Relations Committee, Chair Mendez, said that they were considering that they were considering in November. They said that they were confident that it will be held before December 11th. The next that King's uh, proposal is popular. Dick Durbin has said that he will authorize it post midterms. And they also they said that there's no of armed service chairmen, so that there's no way it will not be addressed in November. The next that other planes bill in Hoff has a bill, a new GOP alternative, which literally writes a blank check for the government, which no one wants. It is incredibly unpopular, which means um, no one's going to want that alternative. Next to that, November is key. December 11th, the ECR funds are um, expires, which is, is funds government along with the amendments that allow us to do this. Means we have to do it for no, 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 we have to do it in November, otherwise we're all screwed. The next Obama says yes, we're going to say that Kane has said that he's confident that Obama will embrace his proposal if it is held during the uh, lame duck session post, post midterms. The links. One, the plane crosses a rift in the Democratic Committee and pits the Democratic and Conservatives against each other. It is a, a sp specifically Corker, who's the head minority leader, said that he will um, oppose the he will oppose any form of a draft, even if it is in terms of uh, senators' children. Also, I think they're probably going to be um, the next of them. Menendez will always kowtow to Obama like, because his political future is more important. He also doesn't have children, so he probably won't actually care. The next of them causes a rift with the Democratic with the Democrats. That will say that he will side with Corker, but they'll separate Menendez, which means that there's no push for the bill when the Democrats are for coalition is fractured. Because it cause an uproar in Congress because there will be calls to repeal it because it's their kids that are being sent overseas means that they're probably going to be trying to repeal it or at least sparking any kind of discussion in Congress, which at least creates a time frame deficit wherein the annual map is pushed back and uh, on the discussion post the deadline means that there's not going to be any propensity for it to pass, which is problematic and leads to our impacts. Uh, there and also the next step will um, lead to a repeal of the AUMF in 2001 when it doesn't pass, which forces the um, pro which forces further pr presidential circumvention in order to go to war, which means they will just continue all of your impacts. Drillings. One is the AUMF is to key to legitimate international laws clarifies legal underpinnings of the and guides that they guide the military such as against international terrorist enemy. The next is a um, prereq ending forever war in the Middle East. It constrains geographical limits and prevents um, specific use of ground troops. The next is key to unified the dem the dem uh, the uh, dem domestic political backing. They say that the um, domestic objections are allowed to create too harmful strategic divergence, leads to inconsistency in, res in responses, which causes the harms of the Syria, Iraq, and ISIS to arise. The next is the key to prevent future circumvention. Uh, uh, the next of the impacts. What it breaks the taboo, the director for the Center of Nuclear Nonproliferation Disarmament uh, said that they, they lumped biochemicals and nuclear weapons all together, which lead, which would lead to the nuclear taboo because we can't distinguish between the next expeditionary wars. It creates a forever war, as we've seen in the Middle East, where there is never a sun, there is never a sunset to the war. This is like, oh, so we've been lucky so far. This causes a great power drive, which makes um, extinction inevitable when a world of nuclear exchange because of lots of the sun kills all the phytoplankton means we don't means that we all can't breathe terrorism. They've also said that forever war increases anti-U.S. sentiment. There is uh, any action that is not directly against ISIS will re-increase the risk of an attack domestically. Means that if there, the plan is not directly targeting ISIS, then means that there's going to have a dirty bomb on so the U.S. soil. And our policy is to retaliate. Means that it causes a nuclear exchange, breaks the taboo, extinction level is down. On case. Their first argument is suffering, and they're going to say that this is the reason that we have all these conflicts is because we don't have to look the enemy in the eye. But I say that's not true. We still have troops in the status quo that are going over and looking the enemy in the eye. And war has always been happening by making a few senators' kids go over there. You're not actually going to be able to solve that for that. We're also going to say that you have no propensity to solve because you think that senators don't have the ability to send their kids to boarding school in foreign countries. Probably means that you have absolutely no ability to solve. They can hide them from the government. They can get presidential exceptions to this rule. They also can repeal it because they're the ones in charge of politics. Means there's absolutely no reason why this would happen, especially the probably isn't. Probably means that it's going to be repealed. If not, it is at least a discussion.
discussion, which pushes links into politics. On the impacts, is that good on links in the use time? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, you say MT, oh, you think military makes people better citizens because that's not true, it causes a lot of damage to people who go to the military, whatever. In fact, you say this has a little military adventures, and we're going to say that security is internally to military adventure because you don't solve for the military industrial complex or the constant creation of another that must be securitized against means that there's, oh, that is still going to be happening in a world of the plan just to some senator's kids go, does that mean that it's going to destroy the entire military industrial complex and, and that, but that was going to be pushing for this only reframing our relationship to politics and they will solve for this because there's still going to be wars going on in the steps and they work with the plan means that you don't actually solve for this. You say you challenge capitalism, no articulation of how you say that the use of the military resolves this, you don't. Do, there's no way to increase it. nuclear adventurism because senators oh. don't want to put their kids also, on the ground. Also, more increase nuclear intervention because senators, senators don't want to put their kids on the ground means that they're more likely to launch nukes or launch things that don't involve using troops on the ground and using drones, which are dehumanizing, which means they cause a worse form of war than the type you're articulating because senators don't want their kids to go. Minorities in the military. They say that the plan to have this happen, which ends this kind of uh, this, um, constriction of minorities in the military. And I think that's not true. You have absolutely no reason why they're not going to still be going into the military. You don't solve for any kind of structural disadvantages that cause any kind of economic disadvantages, which you isolate for that. You have no other capacity to solve for global populations. By sending white people to. So the order is going to be case on top. It's going to go to advantage, advantage two, then advantage one. Sorry, can you repeat that? I was standing. Yeah. Okay. Case, which is going to go to bench two, then bench one. And politics is that. And I think critique, which will go the alternative and alternative solvency. And then the links. And then the framework. I've got the critique straight down, so please I will pause sure to let me scroll. Yeah, signposting is not a problem, but please yeah. pause to let me scroll. Okay, I shall. Uh, well, I for you mean your first one? The first page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody ready? The only argument you make on advantage two is that we don't solve the for the economic problems. However, you can see all the analysis that says that minorities are either disproportionately forced into the military due to the two, the two things like policy failures, such and the fact that there's are there are uh, uh, unduly uh, represent, uh, representative re representative and that there are so many individuals that are forced into the military means that uh, we that when we break down this understanding, when we break down the military the military does the industrial complex through the uh, through the affirmative when we when we personalize the suffering to prevent these conflicts from happening in the first place, we resolve all the internal conflicts we talk about additionally, then you are conceding all the analysis that this creates a reconcept uh, on the on on the link level, we need to see that this creates a radical reconception of the way that we, that we engage with the other end. We, and uh, this the plan to create a critical rupture point. All this analysis just doesn't work. You don't get to engage uh, out terminal defense based on one of that argument, which means you can extend all the, all the impact the arguments about how this creates a social violence against individuals, minority, and this leads to a systemic death of this population. Means that you will be evaluating this as an internally as a uh, internal link to the criticism when we say that by specifically spotlighting issues of, of race, uh, race, uh, racial bias within the military, the access to deconstruction of the military, of the military industrial complex means we are able to better be able to resolve these impacts. And one. The first argument makes that we still have troops that are going overseas means we don't solve our and solve our empathy. The hour uh, the problem is that this is exactly our argument that veterans that uh, individuals who have been in the war so that have uh, individuals who, who are veterans tend to be the ones who have the most empathy with the, with the individuals that they have had to face this why things like PTSD are so rampant within the military necessarily means that by actually by actually personalizing it to the political level and actually forcing individuals to confront the or to force our policy and political structure to actually confront these harms is necessary where we are we are we able to resolve the empathy arguments. But additionally, if you say that they say that there's no solvency because they'll just send they send their kids to other countries, however, first we say that there are legal barriers to uh, legal legal, uh, legal uh, enforcement mechanisms within the draft that you are if you are a draft option, then it necessarily means that you are can go to jail as a result of this means that individuals are forced in the military as a result of this means that all of our military, all of our arguments about how policymakers are forced to get rid of this necessarily means we are to solve this. But even if they do somehow get out of it, it's still in term link, it still functions functions uh, uh, as solvency argumentation by forcing they forcing our politicians to confront the military as it has, it has existed and said no the military itself is a bad thing and has, and has caused so, so many problems that we don't want our children in it necessarily means that we are still able to get them to get the front competition arguments. You make arguments about how this is going to lead to rollback because we have because Vyad is durable, however you uh, get out of Vyad must be it has to be durable in all cases. If if, if it wasn't that politics decides would just be the plan is roll back. There's, there's no there's no there'd be no affirmative access means that we still get access to Vyad. And additionally this is you don't provide or provide any more as why as to how this is going to happen necessarily means that we, we still get access. You say that security is the internal link to solve for assault for militaries, not only do you not provide a warrant for this, but additionally say that the only reason that we have security have we have a security 
mindset is because of militarism. It necessary means that the only way the only way to break down the way we enforce things like securitization is through by breaking down the military structures themselves and to be able to resolve this. And the last argument makes that we we will use other uh, me the mechanisms such as nuclear adventurism first. Man, mutually assured destruction probably checks back against things like mutually like, like nuclear adventurism and probably won't use drones. And we probably will not be using, using, using drones because we've seen the uh, damage that happens as a result of drones and that by breaking down the military industrial complex, we still are able to resolve this usage of technology. Good. Yep. And extend the impacts here. This literally the critique debate is going to come down to a question of links. When we resolve not only the political structures that are causing that are the enforcement mechanism for all of your forms of militarism arguments, means that the affirmative is going to be an internal link to the criticism and probably the really justification for the permutation. But on politics. First argument is unique in space. The unique control almost the length of the sunset clause is inevitable. All of your argumentation comes down to whether the sunset clause, clause is included in the AUMF. Means that the necessary means that there are sunset clause clauses which would never be included. Not only is there a significant uh, opposition to the opposition to an unlimited uh, use, of, use of force, but then as a result of the Iraqi conflict, because of multiple senators such as Charles Rangel, who said who said that unlimited use of force is bad. But additionally, you have so it builds up your uniqueness to the point where you can lift the fact that I mean, McCain, who's one of the biggest uh, biggest uh, representatives within the Republican Party, has. But this forwardness it means this uh, means that the is, is nettle. But regardless of all of this, we straight turn act uh, the entirety of the thesis of this argumentation through our militarism arguments. The entire basis of your disadvantage is that we are going to go to war in another country, and we're just going to be unlimited. Necessarily means that when the affirmative does this, and this is going to pre preclude the question of whether a bill goes into effect in the first place. It means that you, when you can you multiply all of our argumentation about how the uh, people aren't going to vote for a war in the first place, if, if we are going, if, if they have to send their children to the Conflict necessarily means we are able to resolve the internal into all of your into all of this analysis. But even if they were going to vote for a war, they'd probably vote for a shorter one if the kids are going to serve. Additionally, even if they were going to vote for a war, which they would not, like you, Jacob's just right on this issue, the, it would probably be a significantly shorter one. It means that all of your now means that we probably turn link turn all of your analysis. But additionally, the next argument is going to be militarism is the root cause of the ISIS conflict. The little as you can look to the uh, Iraqi and Afghanistan conflict that led that the uh, systematic system, uh, system breaking down things like infrastructure spending, uh, sending in the attacks, uh, attacks on civilians within the Iraq and Afghanistan is what uh, gave rise to the to the to the, to the, to the group of ISIS. That's what it means that by breaking down the structures of militarism, we are able to better be able to resolve the internal conflict. Additionally, make arguments about how this is going to lead to presidential circumventing of Congress to say that Obama already had, Obama has two children. He's not going to send his children to war. He specifically wrote an entire book about a letter to his daughters. And that means they probably prioritize that over any other conflict, over any other conflict. Over any other conflict. And that means that this argumentation doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Additionally, you can, you can also look to the fact that you can also just cross by all of our case solvency arguments here that we are the critical re re uh, breaking of the uh, of these of these structures that justify militarism in the first place necessarily means that the policies decided is probably a rhetorical link back into your criticism when you are saying that you have to uh, say we have to have a conflict in the first place necessarily means that you are uh, relinking into your own criticism. Good. Good. On the alternative. Do the plan and endorse the politics of insecurity. Do the plan and endorse the politics of insecurity. Couple of arguments. First, the inverse of the theory is the theory practice gap. First, says there's a right. There is a gap between between the uh, the ideas that have that happen within the, within 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 theory and the actual implementation of these uh, these ideologies. Necessary means that the plan is able to run to both the theory theory practice gap in order to be able to create, uh, in order to implement these these ideologies into the actual uh, in, in, in order in order to actually create a uh, real change. Additionally, second, the the firm the firm is a signing board that uh, even if there are some aspects of militarism that we still support, we are able to break down the fundamental underpinnings that allow for the uh, for the system to come into to, uh, to exist in the first place. Necessary means. The affirmative is internally turned to uh, the, the affirmative and that benefit. Additionally, third is that the, uh, the alternative sees the political, that they uh, try to work outside of the system. However, the uh, structures of militarism become so uh, all encompassing that even from the uh, uh, access to all aspects of the, of the system, that even our education system is uh, funded by the military. This it means, that we, it means that we have to work through political structures. We have to work through this understanding before we be able to break this down. This has a, uh, couple of, a couple of understand a couple of implications. First, is terminal assaults in the case because uh, to the alternative, because they yeah, not work, they can't, the individuals have all the money, have all the guns, can't uh, work. Where they uh, won't, won't be listening to all of your argumentation, only the affirmative access to this petition second is a defense to the current counter plan by a uh, disadvantage to the alternative. The, because it means that political elites are going to just isolate and destroy and cause violence upon, uh, upon individuals who endorse this kind of ideology petition and third is access to burn them back into the permutation because it allows us to uh, better be able to access and uh, to, to resolve the uh, result of harm to within the system. It means we are able to uh, resolve all of your internal conflicts. But you say that the alternative, uh, but on, on your on the solvency itself, all of this argumentation is just that if the interrogation is good, however, the, uh, the affirmative is the interrogation. We are better to interrogate from within the system to be able to challenge individuals on a faith based basis in order to be able to better be able to resolve and resolve this conflict. And interrogating from the outside is never uh, is never truly effective is never truly effective and only causes individuals to be uh, to become more uh, ingrained in their own social reality and causes to to reject outside viewpoints as it means that the uh burden that permit is key. On the lines. I lost my next page. 
page. There we go. First argument is going to determine that we break down the, the, break down the, the way the war, the war is implemented in the first place. You can look to Jacob's analysis that people will go to war if they think that it's going to have to send their, ch their children to sitting square to be able to break this down. Uh, additionally, the next argument is totally break down the quantification of war that the, 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 the capitalist structures and corporations add, get resources by the through military inventionism that the uh, indebtedness and appropriation, uh, appropriation of uh, territories necessarily increases. This means that we are able to break down the modification. You can cross by the affirmative as internally turned to the crisis. Uh, it'll be the case. Uh, then it will be politics. Then it will be the suffering advantage, and then it will be the minorities advantage. And I can give that a I mean, you can also. Yeah, for sure. Suffering. What was the order of the advantages? Uh, it's going to be suffering and the minority, so advantage one advantage two. Yeah, gotcha. Is everybody good? Did you say you I said just one second. Okay, for sure. I didn't want to start if you weren't ready. So, to flow this sweet arc. All right, and remind me again. K politics. Yeah, K and then politics and then case and order functionally. By functionally, I mean it is in order. Everybody good? Alternative extended process permutation not going forward as all the offense permutation just as competition don't allow them to get the offense in the PM market because this resolves back all of their uh, internal internal arguments which would be inevitable in a world of permutation resolves back all of their offense politics. Framing for the uniqueness is that if there is no bill that actually ends up getting passed, if Kane's bill gets delayed past December 11th, then it becomes doomsday because we don't have an authorization of the military force for the conflict that is already going on. It's a question of whether or not we are successful uh, against ISIL now it means that it's a conflict that has already been established. Deconstructing militarism does not resolve the fact that there are already terrorist insurgents groups that are creating themselves, which we will fail against if there is not an authorization of the military force because we have a permanent war because we have to try to uh, establish ourselves against that none of their link turns are responsible to the fact that in hospitals uh, they send a blank slate which would allow for a massive military expenditure and also causes the breakdown of the coalition against ISIL which causes all of their impacts to happen on a much quicker time frame internal link turns both of the advantages and causes nuclear extinction uniqueness. You say the nuclear, uh, you say the unit is overwhelmed to because the sunset clause will be done, but you could not, you have conceded our argument that says that the November deadline is key because that's when the continuing resolution happens, which means that the bill has to come before then, and that the only, uh, the, the opposition bill is the in hoc bill, which actually would be the default that would happen in a world where there is political backlash over the Keynes bill, and the Democratic coalition actually gets, uh, gets fractured upon this means that we are controlling you, making this framing on which bill ends up getting passed post plan. There will be such an uproar over senators having to send their kids to war that they would not pass an authorization military force because it would drain so much political capital and no one would want to authorize one in the first place indicates that that would cause the ability for us to fail against ISIL which would cause all of the impacts that they have isolated about war and structural violence being bad acts on a much quicker time frame because it creates a terrorist haven that we cannot secure against especially in a world where we are not actually engaging in militaristic adventurism now this is an internal link turn to all of their offense they just say that we uh, they just say that they turn the pieces of the uh, they say that uh, the people like Rangel and McCain have already put forward that they want a sunset clause but our argument is that when politics becomes mired in question of whether or not they're going to pass this specific authorization of military force, then it causes the bill to not pass by the December 11th deadline, which causes us to have either A, a perpetual war, which would terminally internally alter, uh, link turn all of their offense, or B, we don't have any military force at all in the area, which would cause a failure against the ISIS coalition, which correlates itself in terrorism and internal link turns all of their offense. It is a much bigger impact than anything that they have implicated. Drop down to the links. You just say that you're a, a link turn because people will have to be sending their uh, kids to war, but you have conceded our argument that says that this creates a rift in the coalition which causes us to not pass an authorization of military force in the first place, which devastates the coalition. It means that we are not abiding by international law and we do not have the ability to maintain our coalition in the first place. You have also conceded that this will collapse the democratic coalition, which would allow for the sunset clause to be established in the first place. Not an actual uniqueness argument other than saying that people want it. That is the point they want it, but that has to pass by December 11th because that's when uh, the continuing resolution will come about and they would need to pass it in the lane back session because that there is a time frame element that you are not a draw drawing for. You just say that they would want to go for a shorter war. Our argument is that not only would they want to not send anyone to war there, which would mean that they would not authorize force, which causes failure.
failure against ISIS, which causes terrorism and extinction, but also this is the reason for why we run a nuclear adventurism argument that says that they don't want to put any boots on the ground because now they're worried about their kids, which increases the likelihood of a strategic first strike, which would not be accounted for by MAD because it would prevent uh, senators from having to send their kids to war in the first place, which would be an internal link to all of their advantages and gives us credence to that argument. You say that Iraq and Afghanistan conflict rose, uh, gave rise to ISIL. That is, uh, th that might even be a structurally true argument, but you do not resolve that by the affirmative. We have already created the terrorists. It's a question of whether or not we are responding to them in the first place. Securitization might be true in this circumstance, but we've already created the threat. It's a question of how we respond to that threat, and that threat is ultimately something that will culminate itself in a dirty bomb that would be launched against the United States, which will cause a extinction level event, or at the very least draws the United States in because they have to try to fight against the terrorist groups, which would internally turn all of your military uh, adventurism arguments because we would be embroiled in another Afghanistan in case that the only way which we would prevent that is by voting against the permanent war and justifying it in the first place means that we are way ahead on the internal link. But you say Obama has two children and would prioritize the uh, and would prioritize them and the conflict our argument is that the, this would be the reason for why we would not be able to send any soldiers to the military anymore either 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 A. We still send a whole bunch of troops into ISIL, uh, and it's a question of whether or not we have a sunset clause to end that conflict, which means that all of their militarism arguments are inevitable and irrelevant because we still go to conflicts with places like the Islamic State. Or they send the kids in, and they want to make that conflict end as fast as possible so they will resort to a nuclear first strike. Either way, they are way behind on the impact debate, and they have conceded our argument that says that the way in which they would repeal the AUMF would cause circumvention, which would cause us to not go to war in the first place and collapse with the coalition, which means we cannot fight against the Islamic State in the first place. That causes terrorism, which guarantees all of the impacts of the extinction level event that, terror, uh, that Sarah says about how uh, terrorism would occur itself means that it's a question of whether or not we're able to be successful against the Islamic State in the first place, which causes a massive amount of uh, increase, uh, which increases the uh, risk of an attack domestically, which would then be responded to because of nuclear force, and in a world where the United States gets uh, annihilated with a, with a dirty bomb, even that would be the death of millions of individuals, which would still be an internal link to all of their advantages, also would flip the political script and would jack all of their uniqueness because it would mean that we would return to a logic of adventurism because everyone would rally around the flag of patriotism and want to respond military, uh, militaristically towards the terrorist group that, uh, that was able to destroy a massive uh, U.S. Citizen, uh, city, which means that there's not an ability for them to actually make a politics argument because it's change of politics would necessarily be free, Frank, and it's not a question of whether or not they have to still send their children to war, which I don't think they're going to be able to win a uniqueness argument for anyways, but it's a question of how we respond if there's a failure of the ISIL, uh, if there's a failure of a domestic backing on the ISIL, like action, uh, on the way in which we respond to ISIS, then that causes ISIS to be able to win. They have not made an argument that says that the military still exists post-plan, or that we would still engage in conflicts, and an ISIS win guarantees a domestic terrorist attack, which would guarantee nuclear extinction. They have conceded this throughout the entirety of the debate. There's not an internal link term. No piece of defense on this guarantees an extinction level event to the affirmative, which internal link turns all of their offense and makes it impossible for them to win this debate. So, remember in their inherency when they said that there would still be abilities for people to circumvent this, like things like conscientious objectors? No idea for why these senators wouldn't just all say that their kids are conscientious objectors to the war and get out of it or send themselves to other countries, to boarding schools, to be able to avoid the conflict in the first place. There's not an actual argument that says that they would actually send their kids in the first place, and even if they were forced to, then that means that they would want to resolve the conflict as fast as possible to stop them from getting into conflict in the first place, which would increase the likelihood of things like nuclear adventurism, or at the very least causes drones to happen because that doesn't require boots on the ground, which would incentivize the militaristic logic that is allowing them to kill uh, individuals expedient, exponentially, which causes the internal link to all of their arguments about how we conceive of the other, the other gets eradicated in the world of drones because we would militarize the drones so that we don't have to put boots on the ground in the first place. That embroils us with conflicts and, still, uh, and instills the militarism logic that you're trying to internal link to means the senators will just find another way of war that can be justified that doesn't involve their kids actually being sent to boots on the ground. Means the drones would circumvent all of their offense and prevents them from being able to solve anything in the first place. Ain't you extend across the nuclear adventurism argument. You just say the bad checks, but the calculus becomes much different if, if all if everyone in Congress is afraid that they're going to lose their kids to war with ISIS means that, that would increase the likelihood that they would want a nuclear first strike. And even if it's just a nuclear first strike against a country, that would kill millions of individuals and, and, and reinserts the logic that we are still better than them and establishes those hierarchies which would internally turn all of their advantages on minorities. You do not make an argument that says that, the, that you would be able to resolve the other one when you're still doing things like the drone campaign and the fact that senators would not send their kids to the military in the first place means that there's a terminal solvency deficit and the dissent would necessarily turn this because we would be embroiled in a conflict and drones would internally turn this offense as well. Okay, overview. Uh, this, uh, 
and then this in order. I'm going to make sure the right order. Okay, yep. Everyone good?
would like an overview on top, followed by politics, advantage one, and advantage two. ballot for Nevada CN today because my opponents are trying to go both directions in the member of opposition, but this isn't going to function for them because they're trying to give us conceded arguments about militarism, but then take them back immediately afterwards so they can get to their impact. What they try to say is that if we win our militarism links, then we never go to war. But then they're conceding that we have already resolved the internal, the internalized drive for war that exists in the military, in the government right now. It means that we're going to be able to resolve the nuclear adventurism that they are talking about. This is Corey's argumentation coming out of the MG. Is the reason why we're going to be winning the debate today? At the point at which they never, or they can't grant us our impact scenario and then take it away so that they get their impact turn two seconds later. This is why my opponents are not going to be able to win on politics. The first argument that you need to extend is at the link level, where Tor Corey gives you the term about militarism. They fail to interact with this. They say that if this works, then we have too short of a war, and that's a problem. But the story of this politics scenario is that sunset is good because inevitable or um, inevitable. Uh, sorry, yeah. super long war, never ending war is bad. So if shorter war is good, and they grant us our link term that we lead to a decrease of militarism, which gives us a lower propensity to pass the inevitable war, and gives us a higher propensity percent to pass the sunset version of this bill, then we are going to be able to resolve this question. All of the rest of their argumentation is just arguing around this one argument, because this is the kill shot to their politics disad. We knew this politics scenario was coming, so we wrote our link answers during prep. That is why we're able to resolve this, but the next link term that you can extend is that, um, sorry, that is uh, that is the link term that we are going to be winning this question on. The next argument that you can extend is at the internal link level, where Corey says that militarism is the root cause of ISIS, that if we continue to enter into wars with other nations and that we have these never-ending wars in other nations, it's just going to lead to the upcropping of other action, or other organizations that we want to target, that militarism leads to the never-ending conflict, that we are always going to threat construct so long as there is militarism. When they never answer this back, this means that we beat them to their impact scenario. Even if you grant them this impact scenario that maybe ISIS wins in the Middle East right now and that ISIS might commit a few terrorist attacks against the United States. We are still winning that we're able to resolve this into the future it means that we have the larger magnitude of impact. Did you say point of order? Yeah, yeah. I think any new extrapolation of this Iraq and Afghanistan conflict gave rise to ISIL being an argument for why they're able to resolve the internal link or at least the impact in the future is new extrapolation that should have been in the MG. I mean, I've got every single sheet and flow of Corey saying that militarism is the internal link to your impact scenario, both for the criticism and for the politics scenario, and that this is going to be the prior question to your impact scenario, but I'm sure it's a panel. Is it that What this means is that we are going to be able to resolve these questions at the point at which my opponents aren't responding to the fact that militarism is going to be the root cause. Even if they win this one scenario, we are winning that there's going to be an inevitability of further scenarios into the future that we are going to be able to resolve means that you are going to be voting for the affirmative on that argument. Or do you want something to break? Right, this is the critical rupture point. Extend Corey's argument that this is the critical rupture point that breaks the cycle. As long as we allow the cycle to perpetuate, even if we beat ISIS tomorrow, we'll be beating someone else next week. We're just going to continue this violence. Advantage one. The first argument that I want you to extend is the second link argument, that where we say that Vietnam was one of the first uprisings against military action, that personalization of suffering leads to response to military action. This is the critical argument that my opponents are missing. They say that we have no uh, propensity for our link, but when we tell you that there's a personalization of suffering that has historically happened, that was able to resolve for the United States militarism in that scenario, then we, can, we have the propensity to solve here. When they never interact with that argumentation, we're going to be winning that link. The next argument that they make is that they are just going to be able to enroll their kids as conscientious objectors after that, ignores the way the conscientious objection works in the status quo, that you need to have proof that you're a conscientious objector, that you have to be registered with some kind of organization that would provide this conscientious objection means that they're never going to be getting any ground on this turn because we already have checks in place and the status quo that is going to be able to resolve for this. The next order that they say, yeah, Corey? Yeah, and even if they do find loopholes 
they, it still forces politicians to confront it. Right, even if they do find loopholes, it still forces politicians to confront it. That even, when the pol even if the politicians are able to get their kids out of it, that the fact that they have to get their kids out of it means that they are confronting this suffering face to face because it becomes more real for them when their children are at a propensity to go to war and fight in the conflicts that they are voting to authorize. It means that we are able to resolve this. When they never interact with the argumentation about how face to face realization is key, they're never going to be beating us here. The, um, nuclear adventurism. Right, on nuclear adventurism, they say that there's no probability uh, for MAD to check, but they literally don't explain this. We say that MAD is going to check because other countries aren't going to approve the United States running around nuking people. Probably not going to fly in the international community and would escalate aggressions and lead to mutually assured destruction being able to check here. On advantage two. They say that we don't resolve because we don't take minorities out of the military. What we're saying is that we don't enact violence against the minorities in the military because we're not sending them to be killed overseas. It means that we're able to resolve this. At the point at which my opponents are trying to give us our militarism impacts and then take them back, we're going to be winning on the politics scenario. It means that we're going to be able to resolve with the advantages and, as a result, win the debate. Congratulations to both teams. It was a, uh, it was a two-one decision for the Nick from University of Puget Sound. Um, I sat. Uh, for me, I was pretty compelled by the uh, sort of impact of Chicago's argumentation and the affirmative rebuttal. Um, I think there, there's enough solvency and durability of solvency that they can. More or less, I mean, I think they can almost grant, more or less grant this position and still outweigh it as explained in the rebuttal. Um, I think you can prevent that pretty easily. I think you've got the argumentation in the debate to prevent that. It's just not in the rebuttal. The argument that the U.S. gets dirty bombs, they're going to turn around and be pretty militaristic again, is compelling and I think a major problem for your argumentation that, well, maybe this war will happen, uh, but will prevent all of the other future wars becomes a lot less credible. Um, so that's how my decision broke down. I think y'all can make this a lot easier on yourself. Um, for one, this strategy or this this member strategy is infinitely predictable. It's not like they're going to go the other way and kick the dis ad and have much of a compelling argument to make on securitization after talking about the AM, uh, AMUF for a while. Um, or AU, yes. Uh, so, you know, I, I think you can hedge against that a little bit better. This disad is good uh, from the top to the links and then becomes relatively asinine from internal link down. And you just do no work there. Uh, I think it has some, you know, you get them, get, get them away with a lot and force yourself into a hole where you've got to try and outweigh basically a nuclear war. Whereas, you know, they've got no argumentation, for example, you know, for uniqueness on these internal link questions, like the U.S. is going to beat ISIS now in the status quo, the U.S. is going to commit to doing so, that ISIS has any sort of propensity for using a dirty bomb or attacking on American soil. None of these things uh, do they uh, have any claims on in this debate. So I think you could, I mean, your best bet is, you know, and it's a lot easier if maybe you're essentially granting up to uh, you know, we don't fight ISIS, but do you, know, you don't have to grant them any of that shit below, below there. Um, and I think that cleans it up for you uh, quite a bit. I also think as far as an issue I had with this strategy, you know, I've got no problem with the conditional criticism, your ability to, you know, uh, extend, you know, extend their perm. I don't think you get to unsay your framework argumentation, you know, once you've I happen to think the illusory nature of fiat is something of a truism, but once you highlight and celebrate that fact, I, it's going to be hard to walk back the other direction. If they have just a little, if you all are going for just a smidgen of critical framework, uh, I think, and you're using the language enough on your impacts about, you know, rupturing spaces, blah, 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 like, you know, that's great for imaginary senators. If you have just a little, like, any sort of in round impact, I think they've got nothing to leverage. Very little to leverage against you on framework debate. So I think there's a couple of, uh, you know, voted for you. I think you could have made it a lot easier. So. Sure. Um, yeah, I think the debate uh, becomes. Uh, uh, I have actually a lot of thoughts on how the debate's interesting, but uh, I'm like. Uh, criticism, if anything you'd like to talk to me after about it, I don't want to get into it too long because turn is around time, Jogan always gets mad at me, etc. But I think the debate becomes very easy to actually evaluate. I go to the disad first because I think one of two things will happen on the disad. Either 
Uh, or I suppose one of three things will happen on the disad. Uh, short more, which means uh, the disad is the, the disad is solved uh, somehow. And or sorry, one of two things basically happens on the disad. We're doing shit in ISIS, uh, which uh, sorry, we're going to do things to ISIS, uh, which maybe sorry, which seems to indicate that you are not able to solve your own affirmative because we keep continuing to do the same things that you indict, or uh, we do not do things to ISIS. And it's a question of uh, whether the affirmative outweighs um, the disadvantage that in a world where we're not arguments. Um, about how we don't need to do things like this, or about how that might be bad. So, a few more arguments kind of uh, get evaluated as follows. I have uh, the argument that shorter war, uh, what we'd be able to do to shorter war, we'd have like the short authorization. Um, that does resolve the disad. But the MO uh, argument that is not answered is you just say there's a shorter war, they wouldn't send anyone. I don't know how the articulation is that we critically rupture the idea that militarism should ever exist, that we can't affect the other in this way, um, and that we don't want to hurt our kids, so we will send them there for like three months instead of four. I don't think that argument makes sense or is really made in the debate. So um, it seems to indicate uh, we have uh, either sending everyone, which means you're the status quo, or not sending anyone. I have the idea that not sending uh, anyone is a reason that the coalition would be collapsed. I don't know exactly how uh, faithful this is to the LOC argument. I think it becomes a little bit of a new scenario. I think I have a legal war would collapse the coalition now, but uh, there still seems to be arguments that the coalition is key and that we would not, uh, the coalition would not function if we send uh, no one and we do nothing. So. Um, even, even if it shifts in the MO, the MO is constructed and it's not talked about. This argument has a very clear impact, which is that ISIS will use a dirty bomb on the United States. That argument is also claimed to cause retaliation, um, and that retaliation is claimed to cause 100% um, of the affirmative. So it seems the negative is pretty far ahead. There's only a couple other asks for the affirmative on the disad. The first is that militarism is the root cause. Um, I think PMR even seems to acknowledge that they're losing this argument by saying it's about other things later, because the MO is pretty clear uh, that, you know, because it is reverse cause does not, uh, it is root cause does not mean that you can reverse it by critiquing militarism, right? ISIS is there and they aren't like, well, it's nice that we don't have a problem with America anymore. Like, that argument's not made, and I don't think would be very good if made. So uh, it seems that you can't make ISIS go away. Uh, then there's the analysis of comparison, which is really the only way that I particularly differ from Kevin and his decision. I think your analysis of must break the cycle is fine. I think you possibly have the ability to outweigh this disad with future occurrences. I think uh, the problem uh, for that is, first of all, you don't say what those future occurrences will be or why I should expect them to occur. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't get access to that weighing, but I think that's common complicates your ability to do so. I think the biggest thing is that the uh, nuclear uh, retaliation seems to be happening, which disrupts your solvency. I don't have an argument for how we can continue to reject securitization and militarism in a world where there is nuclearization. There are only a couple arguments on case that implicate this. The first is that personalization of suffering can resolve the dissent links or can allow you to keep solving your affirmative. Uh, that doesn't seem to be, uh, that doesn't seem to be true um, in a world um, of the disadvantage. Uh, and that doesn't seem to be, yeah, that doesn't seem to be true in a world of dirty bombs. I never have the argument for how the personalization of suffering, which is particularly about our troops, uh, would stop us from using uh, a dirty bomb against ISIS, uh, or why that would not stop us from solving all the case. I think the only argument that really could be super helpful here is that uh, we get to know the others, so we do not want to hurt them. Uh, I think that's not extended by the PMR, uh, which I think is a fairly big mistake. And even, even if it were, I don't think that argument is contextualized to a world in which the United States has been dirty bombed, which, like, if you think about, uh, you know, would, would certainly change the way we react to things. So I think the disad uh, just happens, um, which means that the case is not able to solve, and it has, uh, you know, this nuclear war scenario. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look just really quickly at a couple comments. I don't want to say too much. Uh, the one thing is that uh, in, in uh, I think in the PMC it makes very little strategic sense to pick politicians. Um, I think that if I were to go for security against you, I think that my links would be about picking politicians and not talking about yourselves or individuals more broadly. Uh, first of all, it only makes it easier for you to get arguments about circumvention because it's a small number of people. It means you can't solve advantage too because we still need all the brown and poor bodies because there's only so many senators, kids. And uh, it seems to really not resolve any of your ethic because it allows every individual in the United States to say it is the damn politicians who are not recognizing their own complicity in violence and still be completely alienated from our war making, which I think is, you know, uh, strategically and ethically pretty bankrupt. Um, the uh, uh, the one thing uh, I would say about the LOC is I think, Sarah, you need to work a little bit harder to, uh, you know, contextualize your security links to the specific round. I think the biggest way to do that would be by inviting their lack of personal responsibility. Um, or by, I don't know, I mean, you still have... Uh, you still have some. You still have some other links in this debate, but the way that they uh, ultimately uh, still be securitized, I think the link that there's more people in the army like is probably a uh, pretty decent link actually. Um, only thing I would say for the MG is I think it's not a very strategic MG. 
uh, I think that you're kind of doing the obvious thing a lot of the time. And I'm a little bit surprised, like I, because I, I, uh, I'm expecting a little bit of a more strategic speech from you, because I know you're a very good debater. Uh, but I think you're doing kind of very obvious cross applications of your team, but you're not doing any hard work. And that hard work being, here's the way that the, uh, here's the, like, here are other answers to the dissent other than our critique seems to solve. And I'm like, obviously you'll have that argument. There's no reason not to make the arguments that Case Stone's talking about. Yeah. I think particularly on K, you, you uh, I think, I totally think they can go for the criticism, uh, you know, absent a perfcon argument, which might have been uh, nice for you. But uh, I think I could totally go for your criticism because you have these permutations, and they're fine, but they're like super generic, and I don't think you're getting past any good critique, any, any good MO on a K is not going to lose to these, perm, uh, these permutation arguments. Then you have a few link terms that sort of assert that you're in the correct direction, but they're not contextualized to the specific links to the uh, criticism, right? There is like certainly going to be a residual link uh, to the criticism through something like use of the state, or through something like making it bigger, or through something like simulating fiat. That is going to mean that they are going to solve 100% of your case because they get to the root cause sooner, and you are not going to have any offense for your permutation against criticism. I think that uh, very easy to win with curization fatigue. Uh, I don't have a, I don't have too much for the MO. I thought uh, I, thought, I thought the block strategy is fairly good. Uh, for the PMR, you can't, you're not going to be able to win this debate with four arguments on this disad. Uh, you need to take, uh, this disad supposedly turns all the case. You need to take it a lot more seriously. I think you also need to be uh, looking for your arguments. If you want to go for this turns case strategy, you need to look for the more specific arguments that you're making elsewhere to actually support that. I think your argument that we get to know the other and we want to not bomb them is probably your best out to the nuclear retaliation argument. I don't know if it's a winner if you go for it, but the fact that that's absent from the PMR and gets me, you need to look harder for these more specific ways um, to clash with the MO strategy. Also, just got to clash with the MO more. Like, uh, I think it's pretty clear that the, the story that Connor wants in the MO is that we'll do nothing and that will cause ISIS to win. And I don't think you talk about that hardly at all. Sorry, that was too long. So, uh, for me, the affirmative offense seems to come from basically just one line of argumentation, which is the plan will personalize militarism, militarism sucks. Advantage 2 seems pretty much like the impact module to that argument. So, the negative has a couple of arguments that indicts this line of argumentation for me. The first one is that senators will just send their kids to boarding school and petition Obama for a draft daughter exemption. This is kind of a I think this is a little far-fetched as a defense um, on the specific, but I, I think that that, what that, that does indict whether or not this attempt at personalizing violence is going to be successful. And also there's the drones argument, which I don't think is handled correctly, that says that this attempt at personalizing violence is not going to end up personalizing that violence and deconstructing militarism, but rather it's going to lead to a bunch of senatorial kids sitting on some couch on the base while drones are raining destruction and militarism is just going to morph into that. So for me, that solvency is uh, heavily united. So when I compare that to negative offense, which is on politics, that becomes highly problematic. For me, the negative uh, is winning the disadvantage on several places. First, they're winning that this bill is key to beating ISIS. And second, they're winning that there's going to be some kind of gridlock in that even if people result and resolve this disadvantage, this debate in some kind of favorable way to the United States, if we don't pass it by November 21st, or whatever the data was, we will lose against ISIS. So that's problematic because uh, because it doesn't matter, you don't, they don't have to win that it's popular or unpopular, they just have to win that there will be a debate. And they do get that link in my mind. And that leads to one of two things. Uh, one is, uh, maybe, if your affirmative is correct, and we deconstruct militarism, and affirmative is so awesome to deconstructing militarism that militarism disappears in the United States, we stop doing anything really against ISIS, and we may break the cycle for the future, but ISIS will still be there. And ISIS will detonate a dirty bomb in the United States, killing thousands of people and probably bringing back militarism. That is problematic. The other one is, uh, that is obviously going to be problematic, and the other one is obviously you fail to deconstruct militarism when we go to a war, even if it's a short war, that leads to, um, that leads to some kind of backlash. Uh, that leads to a military backlash and war, which means that your affirmative don't get any sol any kind of solvency, and uh, we end up with all the impacts on the disadvantage, which turns to affirmative and means that the negative ends up with all the offense and the affirmative gets none. So. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.